Daryl Jordan Smith is the communications and media vertical head at Red Hat and is here with us in Dallas at the TIA 2015 Network of the Future Conference. And Daryl, as always, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, you know, I really want to ask you a couple of questions about um, how it became that Red Hat got involved in the telecom market, but really what evolved prior to that involvement in this vertical? Right. Well, Red Hat as a company have been around for you know, more than 15 years. Um, we established our business based on an open source model uh, where we actually uh, contribute upstream to uh, open source projects and there are many thousands of them with many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of developers. And we then take an image of what that is and bring it downstream and build all the support and certification and indemnification around that. Uh, we first did that with Linux uh, and brought to market Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux to the marketplace and predominantly focused uh, very largely on selling that to financial services uh, institutions, trading floors, anyone that had a traditionally a very expensive workstation who really wanted to look at how they would actually lower costs significantly in that space. In theory, there are certainly uh, a lot of benefits to open source, and we've seen real-world uh, use cases of open source, of course, over the last several years. What are some of the technical benefits of open source? Well, technically, um, as I said, there are literally hundreds of thousands of developers. So as a consequence of that, you can actually develop a lot of code. Um, so you can actually build out a project or a, a technology very rapidly. And because there are so many eyeballs looking at all that code, we're in a situation where um, there are many people looking to how they can improve it or break it or make it more secure. So as a consequence of that, the, the errors per line of code in open source is much less than errors per line of code actually in proprietary based software because you've physically just got tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of people contributing, examining, improving all the time that code. So it sounds like there are some pretty uh, interesting uh, nuances to the business economics uh, in open source, what are some of those? Well, beyond the fact that you, know, you have hundreds of thousands of developers developing code, driving that innovation from a business perspective, economically, you're looking at a situation where um, you can reduce the operational expense and, well, the capital expense of, a, of, of actually acquiring the technology by up to 40 to even 50% in some instances. So economically, um, both from a uh, operational perspective as well as future-proofing perspective, you're not locked in or, or, or uh, you know, tied into any one particular vendor because the code is open to everybody in the marketplace. Let's talk about the cloud for a moment and how that ties back with open source. How does open source fit into large-scale cloud environments? Well, open source fits into uh, cloud environments because, again, with OpenStack, the open source project for cloud-based uh, services, is really the next step beyond uh, virtualizing your services. So we started off with uh, standard appliances. Uh, we then moved to virtualizing those appliances and putting them in the virtual world. And then we come to cloudifying those services, i.e. creating stateless-based applications and services that sit in a cloud versus stateful applications that are tied to a particular virtual machine. And now we're within telecommunications and where we're seeing the growth in this market is as we take some of those stateless applications and connecting them together, service chaining is what it's called, we can actually deliver a whole different set and uh, mechanisms in which to deliver new services in the future. Now, of course, uh, terms or words like OpenStack, uh, open source, open daylight, uh, these are all very familiar to Red Hat and somewhat familiar to the industry at large, but can you describe uh, those various platforms so, and, and software capabilities? Oh, well, in terms of uh, where Red Hat started in, at Linux, you have a base platform which is based on a, uh, an operating system called Linux. On top of that, you have OpenStack. Uh, and Red Hat has its variant of OpenStack called Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack Platform, a very long acronym. Being an engineering orientated company, it's important to have long acronyms. <laughs> so we have uh, OpenStack, and that's another open source project with many people looking at it, lots of contributors, including Red Hat, uh, companies like HP, IBM, Intel, and so on and so forth, delivering and contributing that code upstream. 
Um, then on top of OpenStack, you know, we, in terms of our, our, our business model, we actually have middleware-based applications and services. Uh, we call those JBoss, another big open source project offering you know, Java ME-based services, you know, messaging bus services to interconnect those applications, traditional applications that run over the network. And then on top of that, we have technologies such as Platform as a Service with another open source project called OpenShift. Um, which is a very large project in, 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 in the open source community, looking at actually how you actually put gears or containers in the marketplace to build and run applications. So that leads us into our container-based uh, technologies, which is all based on uh, Docker formats and Kubernetes-based orchestration technologies. Again, all open source. Um, and then we move further out to the edge in terms of some of the things we do at Red Hat in terms of developer tools, uh, particular as it applies to telecommunications around a technology called Feed Henry, which looks at how you actually uh, build mobile services for mobile devices. Daryl, I want to ask you, I want to finish this conversation asking you about um, why you would come to a telecom event like this. And is it still a telecom event or are we, are we talking more of a communications event? It's more of a, comp it's, it's the convergence of communications and IT, or we call it ICT in the industry. And I think that it's gaining momentum and uh, most of our customers are actually combining their IT capabilities with their communications capabilities and bringing those two organizations together, which is changing the culture within those, those businesses to be more software orientated. Uh, more nimble, agile in terms of what they're trying to achieve. So really this, this conference isn't uh, you know, what it was maybe a few years ago where we were focused on telco-based applications and services. It's really focused on how do you enable services over a software layer to drive that and build you know, different types of um, uh, capabilities within your business in both cultural shift as well as, as, as physical services that drive revenue and reduce costs. Daryl, as always, it's great to talk to you and find out uh, how Red Hat is evolving into these uh, various verticals and how that's facilitating the, uh, the telecom market. So thanks for your time. No, thank you. Thanks, Daryl. And as always, uh, for all of our TIA Now coverage at TIA 2015 Network of the Future, please log on to tianow.org. So long.